My parents have always said my brother is the golden child. He got everything he's ever wanted. And then, once we got older and things start spiraling out of control, they tell my brother, It's okay, you can move in with your bro, aka me. But not only that, you might as well just take his house too, since he's not even married. Today's video is a three-part story. Let's get right into it. I'm a single man in my early 30s. I have a brother who's 29 and he's already got four kids. He had his first at 22 and the second followed a year later. Then the third two years after that and the fourth is the most recent born a couple months ago. His wife, my sister-in-law, and I do not get along as she always likes to try and get and rise out of me by acting superior. Then turns out it's an extreme self victimizing drama queen if I retaliated against her in any way. She can cry in an instant and can put on an extremely convincing show to get sympathy from just about anyone. My parents and brother absolutely adore her, even though they know exactly how she really is and I just don't care. She's very good looking, I'll give her that, but she's so awful that I can never be attracted to her. She also refuses to get a job, even though she has a college degree and my mother willingly helps with the kids all day. So their finances are entirely dependent on my brother. This also means they can't afford to live anywhere but my parents' house, and privacy is a bit of an issue with all of them under a roof and a three-bedroom house that was built in the 60s. Growing up, my younger brother was obviously the favorite, we threw three years apart in age, but he developed a superiority complex because I was badly punished if I retaliated against his antics back in any way. It was obvious my parents cared for him a lot more because he's got the lion's share of everything and less people call them out on it, which did happen a fair bit by other members of the family, which is why my parents packed us all up and moved us about 150 miles away. So they generally only would see us on the holidays, since it was a three-hour drive now. My brother got physically abusive towards me a number of occasions, flirted relentlessly with my first girlfriend to the point she broke up with me, and laughed at any misfortune I had. My parents just told me to suck it up whenever I was upset about it, and I only got equal treatment when my parents wanted to keep up appearances. I admit... It was rather funny to see the looks on their face whenever they had to treat me equal to my bro on birthdays and Christmas because other people were around. We had relatives that were very nosy and loved gossiping drama. So, my parents did their best to hide what was happening and threatened to take all my stuff away if I did not keep my mouth shut. If anything, it just made my parents celebrate more when I turned 18 and moved out because it meant they no longer had to provide for me. I wasn't even done with high school yet when I moved out, but couch surfing was far better than living with them. I went low contact ever since leaving home. They didn't even show up for high school graduation, but I really didn't care. From the point on, I would usually only see my parents and brother on holidays like the rest of the family. The start of the 2020 pandemic was... Well, it was not kind to me. I lost my job and I could not renew the lease on the condo because my roommate also lost his job and neither of us could afford the place on unemployment alone. It was a rented two-bedroom condo that we absolutely loved. As the lease was ending, my roommate left early to move back in with relatives and I had to sell nearly all of my stuff because I was soon going to be homeless if I did not downsize to an extreme. I really shouldn't have rented a place that was so expensive anyways, but I liked living the high life. Until that life wasn't kind to me anymore, and I realized I should have been living somewhere far cheaper, so I could have saved more money to fall back on. But I had a plan. I own a trunk simply for the fact that I've always loved trucks. So I found a $1,000 camper in good shape and put my truck just so I could live out of it for a while, it was supposed to be temporary, but I ended up living out of it far longer than I ever thought. I originally was hoping to be able to live out of the camper at my parents' house, where 
My brother and his family still reside as well. But when I asked my parents to let me stay for a while, they told me they had a full house. Didn't want me there. Plus, we had exactly not gotten along in the past decade. They said they'd only agree to let me park my camper there if I paid them basically what it cost to rent an apartment in my area. It was too much just to park my camper. I was jobless and trying to save much money as I could on my unemployment so I could still go and get a new job. I may as well be living in an apartment with that rent price that they were asking. My parents called my camper an eyesore, told me to take a hike since we couldn't come to an agreement. Sister-in-law thought it was absolutely hilarious I had to live in a camper. My brother joined her in pointing and mocking at me while calling me a homeless bum. I parked my truck in a store parking lot to sleep on the first night that I had nowhere else to go. I felt scared out of my mind that someone might try to break in. Suffice to say, I did not sleep very well that night. There was nowhere else I could go, as any of the relatives that owned houses were fairly far away, and all my friends were all apartment people. I was pretty attached to my area as well, so I didn't want to just leave. I'd also have my mail forwarded to a friend's apartment. It was the only way I could still get my mail. Finding a stable place to park was pretty difficult. I went looking around to try to find a job similar to my old one. It took months of living the nomadic camper life. And that time, I had to deal with a lot. Everything from beggars, drug addicts, to people demanding I leave because my camper was an eyesore. At one point, someone who told me that they claimed to be with the HOA. I wasn't even parked on the street with houses. And when I questioned what HOA... They got extremely belligerent and threatened me. So, I just moved my camper anyways to avoid the trouble that they would cause. In order to have a steady supply of electricity, I learned to use a long extension cord to plug in anywhere I could reach to recharge my camper batteries. This meant sneaking around and plugging it into an outside outlet of a random building while parked on a street. I know, I know, that's a crummy thing to do, but I had to keep my batteries charged so my refrigerator would stay cold. I had a small solar power bank for recharging my phone, but I didn't have anything like a generator, and generators are so noisy and require fuel. So I did what I had to do. After months of living like that, I finally managed to get a new job. I had to move to the neighboring city to find a job that did not involve retail. I worked retail while in college and promised myself never again. Though I was really not ready to break that promise, I was still getting unemployment money, but I had no stable place to live while receiving it, and I didn't want to still be jobless when I ran out of it. Plus, I was bored out of my mind. I had little else to do but read watch movies on this small portable DVD player, use my phone or laptop, and keep notes of where I could park and what local public bathrooms I could use. I kind of envy that the Japanese have public bathhouses. We could really use stuff like that over here. When I finally landed a new job, I practically lived in the back lot of the building by the warehouse and the old employees' parking spaces literally no one else seemed to bother using because they were so far in the back of the area it was borderline forgotten. My boss slash company owner actually liked this arrangement because I was willingly available to take any shift I could get, so long as I had enough sleep. He even let me take the camper off my truck and set it up on one of those spaces so I could drive around without it. Not exactly sure if this was legal, but no one bothered us about it. The entire time I lived back there, I didn't have to deal with many trespassers. There were a few, but the security guards just escorted them out. I was pretty much on call almost all the time when they needed me and was working virtually every day of the week. My boss let me plug in my camper into the building for power and water. I paid a small amount of rent by working for free on Sundays when no one else was in the office but the janitor and the security guard. Beyond that, I usually had to shower at a friend's apartment or my local gym, as the camper didn't have a shower, and only a portable toilet. 
I didn't want to fill it because emptying it is a nasty chore. So I used the other bathrooms as often as I could. I had a key to the warehouse and I could go in to use the bathroom there at any hour. I was even on first name basis with the night security guard. He since became one of my closest friends. The camper, it was easy to heat in the winter with a small electric heater. Summers, ah, they were not fun. The camper had no AC, so I had to get used to a portable air conditioner just to make it bearable. I made a lot of overtime pay and hands-on learned some new skills from other employees. Eventually, midway into this year, I landed a better position in the company as a supervisor and started making a better salary than my old job. That's when I decided, I want a house. Well, the scare I'd gotten from losing my condo made me realize I needed something much more stable for the long term. I looked around for something close to my work and... Just two miles away, found a three-bedroom manufactured home on a small property, but I managed to get it for $10,000 less than the asking price. I used nearly all my entire savings for the down payment and got approved for a home loan. I finally didn't have to live in a camper anymore. There was enough space for me back in my truck and the behind the house to take the camper off and set it up in the backyard. So, I put it there as its own little building, just in case. <laughs> I want to use it again. When I was fully settled into the house, I was dumb enough to brag about it on my book of faces. My family saw the post, and that's when this crap really pops off. After a few weeks, my parents and brother, along with his family, came to visit completely unannounced to have a tour of my home. I didn't even give them my address, so how they found out where I live is still a mystery. None of them friends even fessed up, so I don't know. No prior family members visit me before that, so I wonder if they stalked me at work and literally followed me home or something. Honestly, that would be the least of my surprises. Once I opened the door, they practically all shoved their way in like a rambunctious group of tourists then just started making themselves at home. They all kept poking around and sister-in-law had this creepy smirk that she was repeatedly flashing at me. It was only later that I figured out why, and it made me madder than a bull on steroids that just got stung by a hornet. My parents were constantly talking about how I've got so much extra space now, and it's too much for someone like me who has no wife or children. Sure, not now, but someday... And my brother kept remarking about how there was more space than our parents' house. And my house was even closer than its job. Red flags. Red flags. I know. Eventually, my brother asked me to speak privately. Everyone else suddenly left the room and piled out onto the front porch. That's what finally made me realize they were planning something. My brother, let's call him Dan for the sake of simplicity said the house was too much for me alone and I should let him move in with his family because his wife is pregnant with kid number four. And my house is so much closer to his workspace. He pointed out that I already have the camper so I could just live in that outside while they live in the main house. And I'd like to point out that Dan never once spoke of offering rent. Mind you, he's got a good job. He also started talking about how there would be changes, even curfews, and that I couldn't just walk in at any time without prior notice. If it weren't my brother, I'd think the person I was talking to had lost their darn mind. But Dan lost his marbles far back thanks to our parents treating him like he was the center of the universe. I tried to speak, but he keeps talking over me as if I had no say in the matter. There was no way in heck I'd rent my house or my parts of the house even to him. Other people, maybe, yeah just so I could pay the mortgage off more easily, but certainly not to him or his nasty wife. I've heard of this exact kind of situation in videos many times, and I never once did I even think I'd actually live it because I thought it was so ludicrous. Both my parents, brother, and sister-in-law do all fit the bill for a bunch of narcissistic, entitled crazies. So... I picked up my phone and set to start recording, then just held on to it. 
Dan didn't even seem to care or notice that I've done this and just sat there with his arms waving around while talking about all the reasons of why he needed my home. Then went from saying that to acting like it was a done deal and trying to reach out his hand to shake mine. That's when I finally showed my backbone. I popped out my spine. I said, heck no, and said it loud enough that Dan stumbled backward for a second. Honestly, I'd rarely ever raise my voice to him on that level, because I was punished by our parents whenever I did. But guys, this is my house, not theirs. My spine can be as shiny as it wants here. I just stood up and then told him that this house was not up for grabs, and acting like I'll let him move in just because they want to, make it happen, <laughs> yeah right. I bought my home for me. And it's not my fault he keeps having more children and has to keep living with our parents because he can't afford to move out. Dan gets physically close to me at this point, as close as he could without actually touching me, and said that I did not deserve the house. He needs a better place for his family to live. I laughed back in his face and said that was total crap because I've worked hard to be able to buy my home. Of course I deserved it. Dan starts yelling at this point that I have no wife, no kids, and I don't need all this darn space, so I may as well give him some. I said I'm not giving him Jack, and he never even offered to pay me rent anyways. If I let him move in, I'd still be covering the entire mortgage on my own house without even being able to live in my own house. Then Dan told me that he shouldn't have to pay rent because his family comes first. And our parents said I was going to do this and that I will. I yelled as loud as I humanly could. As if their word was law or something. And told Dan that they did not have the right or power to give my house to him. Then right on cue, my parents and sister-in-law barged back in through the front door and surrounded me to try to force me to agree. There was a lot of fighting, but to sum it up from this point on, I heard the line, Just do it for Dan. Way more times than I can remember. In the fight, I told them all they don't have a say in my life or my house, and to get out before I phoned the cops. Sister-in-law screamed the loudest at me about how she was pregnant again, and I can't do this to her. I said I did nothing to her. She just assumed she could take and take and take from me like I would just allow it. I have no obligation to help her or her family. Then I call her a stuck-up jerk who never had any respect for me anyway, so I don't care what she thinks or how many kids she pops out. I have no sympathy for her. She won't be living in my house. Well, that made her angry enough to attack me. She got in one good hit on my face and tried to do more, but my brother held her back kicking and screaming. She kept demanding he let her go and so she could scratch my eyes out. The phone I was holding recorded pretty much everything, so I held it up and said I was going to call the police if they did not leave right away. My parents told Dan they were leaving, then my mother said that I had a week to come to my senses. Well, I told her I won't be, and to not come back. Then I told sister-in-law that my phone recorded everything, and if she tries anything, I'll press charges for assault. She screamed at me and then stormed out loudly, crying hysterically with her face in her hands. My mother was the last one out the door and said that I better do this for Dan and sister-in-law. I responded telling her, I won't. What's up guys, Mr. Redito here, so this story is about to go nuclear. I have part two of this three-part series, and guys, let me just tell you right now, you're not ready for the antics of this family. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. It really helps support the channel, and you'll never miss a daily upload of a different story. So press that subscribe button, and let's jump into part number two. As I stated in the first half of my post, many will find this unbelievable and long. Yes, I'm aware there are similar sounding posts online. I've seen a number of them, but it's not like these posters have a monopoly on this sort of thing happening to their life. 
If anything, I'm surprised this site hasn't been better weaponized against this sort of thing since entitled people should be more afraid of getting outed here. But, anyways, I don't blame anyone who calls bullcrap. I would too if I was reading this. However, by reading this and my first post, you'll know just how messed up my parents are, as in my life, they were the root of all evil that spoiled my brother into the a-hole he is today. And never once have they given me a real reason for why, and I kind of fear there isn't one. Some people can't explain why they make choices like child favoritism, so it's all they can do and try and stand by their child they backed. Which is exactly what my parents tried to do, and I've been practically destroyed their lives for it. Not in legal sense, but more of an emotional sense. After I kicked out my brother and parents and sister-in-law out for trying to force my hand over to the new house to my brother, I immediately went to social media and told the story to the whole family. It spread like wildfire, but you won't find it now because it all got deleted some time ago and I put my own profile on private. I posted about it because I knew that the first thing my family would do when they got home is try to twist the tales of event to make me into the villain. And I was exactly right. But I'd not even had an hour to get started before them. I had video evidence to back up my whole story about what they did. No, I don't plan on showing the video, don't ask. Being preemptive worked because I got a fair number of family members on my side from the get-go. My parents, brother, and sister-in-law must have been all set to write their own posts, but it was too late. <laughs> so they didn't even bother trying to lie much. My parents, Dan, and sister-in-law had a few flying monkeys supporting them, but not much else. Plenty of others knew how entitled they already were, so what happened was something they quickly understood and accepted. There was one person, though, in particular, that called me. I don't know who they were, but they ranted at me that I was a horrible brother, and I needed to make a way for a real family man. I just ended the call and blocked the number. This never repeated. The week went by, and my parents showed up with Dan at my front porch, just like they said they would in prior ultimatums. They rang my doorbell like crazy, also pounded the door until I finally answered. I opened it just to crack, and they tried to shove their way in again, but I'd installed a couple of latch chains that prevented it and even braced my body against the door for good measure. My father and brother demanded I let them in, but I said I was recording everything on camera and would call the police right now if they tried to force their way in. My mother calmed them down and then, in her most sickly sweet tone, asked me if I was ready to let my brother move in. I told her and the rest of them to duck off. Never come back. My mother puts on these crocodile tears and asks me why I can't just do this for Dan. He's my beloved brother. I laughed and, when bluntly said, I don't love him as a brother because he treats me like crap. And they only encouraged him to do so. They're terrible parents and he is a terrible brother. Then told them to leave or I'd call the police ASAP. They all left, surprisingly easily, apart from my mother's loud crying and the others giving me dirty looks. One could say making them leave was suspiciously easy. I thought the whole mess was over now, but I guess I should have taken more serious notes because they had other stupid plans. I came home later that week on a Friday evening to find a moving truck in my brother's minivan parked in my driveway. It was Dan and his family there moving stuff in. He just waved to me with a crap-eating grin when I saw him. I was furious and told him and the rest of the family to stop. But sister-in-law smugly said to me that, like it or not, they were moving in. And then, in the most fake way while tilting her head and puckering her lips, she said that it was okay because my mommy allowed it. And I should always listen to what mommy tells me. I was at this point seething with rage just hearing those words and looking at her smug little face. So I locked myself in my truck to call the cops right away. When they realized what I was doing, sister-in-law starts pounding on my window and yelling at me to stop. And that I can't do this to her because she and Dan need the house. And then she started crying saying, why can't you just do this for Dan? I responded with duck Dan 
It's my house, not his. Then she threatened to key the side of my truck unless I stopped calling the police. All of which the operator heard thanks to the window being open. I told sister-in-law if she damages my truck I would sue her. And she was smart enough to retreat. When the police arrived, Dan and sister-in-law, along with the kids, have locked themselves in my house. I told cops what happened, as well as showing them my new driver's license that had my current address on it. Then, when we went to my front door, I saw that they changed the lock. And the old lock was laying on the porch with the center of it drilled out. And the drill they used was laying next to it with a complete Harbor Freight drill bit set. Could they have been any more stupid, leaving evidence out like that? I pointed out the broken lock and drill, then gave a police a rundown on all the events that happened prior. Well, I guess Dan called our parents over at some point after I arrived, because they showed up while I was talking to the police. My parents immediately lied and started saying that I agreed to rent my house out to my brother and his family. I said that was an easily provable lie one way or the other. So Dan and sister-in-law finally come out of the house with some papers in hand. They both looked super smug like they'd somehow outsmarted me. They'd actually drawn up and printed out a fake rental agreement, but my signature was nowhere on it. There was one, but it looked nothing like my handwriting. I don't think any of them have ever actually seen my signature, so that was incredibly stupid on their part, and I told my parents and Dan that was stupidly blatantly fraud. And if the cops investigated, they'd easily figure that out, and I don't think going to jail and court would do them any justice. <laughs> it could even make Dan lose his job, which is his only means of providing for his family. I also said I would get an amazing lawyer and sue for damages if anything of mine was lost, stolen, touched, broken, and I'd call CPS for good measure. Dan went white in the face and looked really scared when I said all that, but my mother got between us and doubled down about how I should just do this for Dan and live in the darn camper so they can finally have a family home to themselves. I yelled at her that if she thought it was such a good idea, she could do it for Dan herself and let Dan have her house to him instead. At this point, the cops separated my mother from me and I said I wanted them all out right now or I'll press charges. I stated in a shout about how they drilled out my front door lock to break in. The lease papers were obviously fake and they badly forged my signature. And I've recorded video of sister-in-law attacking me. Those are all felonies I could duck over their lives with if I wanted. And if they didn't leave, that's exactly what I would do. The only reason I haven't already was the forsake of Dan's kids. So they have one chance to get the duck out. The moment my parents heard that, I think it finally clicked that they could not force me to do it for Dan. My mother surrendered and said she'd put an end to this. Then she went over to sister-in-law and spoke with her quietly for a minute while my father spoke to Dan. Sister-in-law instantly started loudly crying and ripping up the fake rental papers into tiny bits and tossing them like confetti, only to have an officer tell them to pick up the bits or he'd cite them for littering. Both of the cops at this point had the I don't get paid enough for this look on their face. Dan had to start telling his kids to load their stuff back into the moving truck. The kids were all crying and the eldest was sobbing that he won't get his own room now. Sister-in-law and Dan gathered their kids up to try to make one last pathetic attempt to guilt me with a sad family routine. You know, where they all gather together in a sort of group hug while all facing one direction. I swear I think they've practiced it beforehand. All of the kids had the same pleading look with quivering mouths. Sister-in-law kept rubbing her pregnant belly and tilting her head to look like a sad puppy. And my brother just made the saddest face he possibly could and said, Please don't do this. We need to be able to live here. But I didn't falter and told them to keep it moving. All the kids and sister-in-law turned the crying up to eleven. And Dan yelled at me, are you satisfied with yourself? You've denied us a home because you're too selfish to share and help out family. I ended up laughing like a maniac. 
and retorting that's what he was trying to do was taking, not sharing, and no amount of crying will make me less family move in, because he's no brother of mine anymore. He's just an entitled jerk who thinks he can take whatever he wants from me like when we were kids. Dan started F-bombing me until the cops came and told him to cool it or he'd be in handcuffs regardless if I wanted to press charges. He sucked in his lips and looked a mix of afraid and supremely mad. I asked the cops if they could stick around until my parents, brother, and sister-in-law had all left, and they said they had no intention of going anywhere until this has all been resolved. In fact, in the next few minutes, two cops became four, as more drove up for whatever reason. They gave my parents some extra incentive to get moving, and I made Dan give me the keys to the new lock that he put on my front door. Though, I got another lock the next day anyways, because I didn't know if he decided to copy the keys or not. He was really reluctant to hand them over, though. Then, instead of handing them to me, he actually threw them down the street into a storm drain while saying to go get them myself. But one of the cops then scolded him for that and made him go get it. He had pulled the grate off just to get them and he got pretty dirty in the process. When he got the keys back, he just grumbled and slammed them down in my hand. I then told them all to leave, never come back. My mother said I'd be disowned for this, as if that was some kind of threat to me. I was welcoming that with open arms, and I voiced that to them. Then, in an overly sarcastic manner, I said something along the lines of this. Oh no, that means I won't get to come to any holidays with you guys where I always get treated like crap, because Dan has always been your obvious favorite. You treated all me so badly when I was growing up that if Dan ever needs an organ donor, I wouldn't give him anything. So, do you like always told me to do when I was mistreated by you and suck it up? My parents, well, you can say they were simply floored after this, after I said all that, and the quarter of cops were looking pretty judgmental at them as well. I tell you, if you want to put a nasty parent like mine on the spot, confront them in front of police, because they'll likely not try anything stupid. My mother just starts crying and walks away. My father just stood there looking like he wanted to hit me. And Dan just held his kids in defeat. Oh, and sister-in-law was off having a tantrum in front of my lawn. Soon enough, they were all forming a line handing out boxes and got their stuff out of my house. Nothing had been unpacked yet, thankfully, so it was all taken out pretty quickly. But while doing it, my mother kept saying if it wasn't too late and I could still do it for Dan several times, each time trying to bargain more and more to try to take my mind off of it and change it. She said that Dan could pay me rent if I let them stay. And when that didn't work, she said I could move back in with them to let Dan rent my house out so I wouldn't have to share the building. I told her to just shut up. Keep packing those boxes. I don't want Dan or his family anywhere around me. I don't want his money, and I certainly don't want to live with him or you ever again after the way they've treated me when I was a child. Making a deal with my parents would be like making a deal with the devil. Sister-in-law ended up having another tantrum after hearing that and threw a box down, then sat on the ground to have a pity party because she didn't want to go back to sharing a house with my parents. And she just sat there looking angry and sad until everyone else was finished. She didn't even want to get up when it was time to go. Well, they finally got everything out of the house and into the truck. So before they left, I laid into my parents one last time about all the crappy stuff they put me through growing up. And with four cops being right there, they couldn't do much other than stand there and take it for once. I called them out so many things on so many things that happened and even pointed out how they couldn't just do something nice for me, like letting me stay over with my camper when I was homeless and trying to get me back on my feet. How they let Dan and sister-in-law ridicule me and call me a bum. Well, who's the bum now? 
They wanted to kick me out of my own house so Dan could stay in it for free of charge, yet when I needed a place to go, they wanted to gouge me for more than I could afford just to park my camper when they knew I was out of a job. Well, at this point, there was even more extreme judgmental stares from the cops when I said all that. So, I put my parents on the spot one more time and asked them why I ever did other than being born to them. Why did I deserve to be treated so badly? Because when I finally have a bit of success in life, they want to snatch it away from me for their favorite child since they'd rather I give everything to Danny Boy and have nothing for myself. I bought my house using the money that I earned. I owed them nothing. And I won't be asking anything from them ever again because clearly I'll never be anything more than a doormat or a cash cow in their eyes. I got no answers from them. They just stood there looking like a fish out of water, so I continued ranting and asked them what in God's name made them think they were such good parents after all of that. My father, he was beat red, but more from embarrassment than anger, and my mother was crying that she was a horrible person. I bluntly agreed that yes, she is a horrible person. They all are, and I bet they'll go to heck for it too. They were crappy people and they all know it, but if I'd call them out on this stuff in private instead of public, they'd just get mad at me, still act like I'm in the wrong. Then they'd even just keep the denial up for so long that it becomes a part of who they are. My mother buried her face in my father's jacket to cry, and my father looked more defeated than I've ever seen him. Dan and his family avoided me entirely as they finished putting everything back in the moving truck. I made sure nothing of mine was stolen, not that I'd have a chance to even look or even get much furniture yet. I was lucky enough to have a couch at the time. They all got back into their vehicles, and sister-in-law just stood there staring at me with malice until my brother finally got her to drive the minivan home. And as soon as they were all gone, I got back online again. <laughs> Guys... I spilled the beans of what happened on social media. My parents were too embarrassed to even try to defend their actions this time, and while the family was somewhat split before the incident, it was now an absolute landslide in my favor. Nearly all of my family has sided with me after this incident, and those who haven't simply aren't siding with anybody. No matter how much my parents obviously tried the we did it for Dan line, no one listened anymore. I mean, no one. So, any remaining familial support they had, poof, in the wind, gone. Many in the family who I expected would not side with me, well, they did. That includes the former flying monkeys from part one. So, I guess they finally had enough. Around that time, I offered to host the family at the next Christmas Eve in my new house. My parents, though, <laughs> obviously not invited. I was not blocked on my brother and sister-in-law's profile, surprisingly, and I saw sister-in-law had her fourth baby in early November. They're still living with my parents, I'm pretty sure that they know I'm watching, because sister-in-law kept making passive-aggressive posts every couple of weeks or so about not having enough space while living with my parents, probably to see if she can still guilt me and I'm sure it's driving my mother and father up the wall. Because, well, they aren't getting any peace and quiet in their old age with three rowdy, obnoxious, rambunctious children, a mentally unstable sister-in-law, and don't forget, my golden child brother. And yeah, the newborn baby in the house all at once. Perhaps they can move into a camper in their own backyard and let Danny Boy take over their house completely. Sound familiar? They might get some peace then. Yeah, they could do it for Dan. What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. So you would think after this entire family drama, it would end there. But these guys are relentless. I have part three for you. We're going to jump into that now and it gets crazier. Here it is. I was trying to keep this in two posts, but I realized while compiling everything that part two was just too darn long. So here's part three for those who commented in mass to get cameras. I will, when I can afford it. 
I'm still in financial recovery from buying a house last year, and as far as I know, good cameras need a decent computer to record it, and I don't have anything more than a three-year-old laptop that runs Windows 10. Yes, I'm aware of doorbell cameras. That will be the first kind I get. For those who kept saying that I should have just gotten my brother and sister-in-law arrested for the only reason I didn't was because they are parents. Their kids need them. And if Dan was arrested, he would lose his job, and without that, his family has no money, and sister-in-law has only months of an old baby right now. Neither of them need to end up in jail. But you don't need jail for revenge. Police can help, yeah, but I get payback without filing a police report. Would I be merciful again? More than likely, not. And they know it. So... I decided to wait on making an account and posting until after the new year just in case more stuff pops off. And I did. As previous readers know, my sister-in-law was making passive-aggressive posts on social media that were obviously directed at me. Especially after sister-in-law had her fourth baby in November. She was posting the same repetitive nonsense over and over, and she just found semi-clever ways of rewarding it. But she's pretty much just kept regurgitating that she was tired of living with my parents and that there isn't enough space. She needs her own house, blah de blah de blah I know I sound dismissive, but live through what I have with these people and you'd be ready to sarcastically play tiny violins in front of them. They're just that bad. And since I waited until January to make an account, more happened just like I thought. I stated before that I'd invited half the family for a Christmas Eve party at my house. And everyone I invited all came, even though it was a fairly long drive of around four hours. But they wanted to come and show me support. I was praised by them and a lot for how hard I'd worked to get my own house. And that they were sorry for everything I'd went through. I was asked why I didn't just take my camper and drive three hours back to them. Instead of living pretty much homeless for so long. I sheepishly admitted that I was very attached to living around my town, and I had what is, I would consider, my best employment opportunities in this area. My hometown, it doesn't really have a lot of great job opportunities in my field, if, well, any at all. And I wanted to make my own way as much as I could. An answer to the overall accepted, we moved on to having a rather nice party. The best I've been in, and it could be years. Some relatives even brought CDs of great Christmas albums, and I have to say, the one my uncle brought of Ray Charles was my favorite. He sings Christmas songs like no one else I've ever heard. It was a grand old happy time. I felt like for once I could just forget my past issues and enjoy the moment I'm living in. But I wouldn't be writing this if I stayed that way, right? Get this. About two hours into the party, you-know-who showed up. My parents, brother and sister-in-law popped in trying to look all smiles and ears. They didn't even knock, just walked right in my front door like they were meant to be there. I shut off the music and told them to get out. They begged to stay and said they brought gifts. One of my uncles stood up and yelled at them before I got another chance to speak, and he said they don't deserve to be in my home or my life after the crap they tried to pull months ago. As he was backed up by several other relatives, mind you, this guy is my mother's brother, and he used to love her to pieces until he found out about the crap that went on between me and my parents. My grandparents, which are my mother's parents, as old as they are, hurriedly got in between us and said, my parents, that if they wanted to make amends with me, it's far too soon. And they've never been more disappointed in them than they were this past year. They've hidden their favoritism for my brother from prying eyes for far too long. But no one was fooled anymore, and they needed to make a serious effort to try and actually treat my son like a son if they ever wanted in my life again. Then they turned to Dan and sister-in-law and said that they've seen the repetitive nonsense sister-in-law keeps posting on social media. They're tired of it. And to just let it go already, and my house will not become their new home, uh, ever. Sister-in-law went back to her old standards of crying and had a pity party about how she should be the one living here, not me. Yeah, 
for the third time, here we go again. She plopped down in a chair to have a tantrum and say it wasn't fair I got this house to myself when I have no family of my own. And she has four children that need more space. And she just wanted a better place for her family to live and feel like a real mother. It was petty of me, but I loudly pointed out that she sucks as a mother. She let my mother do most of the parenting while she sits on her butt all day drinking, playing on her phone or going out and spending all of Dan's money. And she has the nerve to complain about it. At this point, I even joked, I'm surprised her baby doesn't get drunk from her breast milk since she drank so much booze. I don't even think she knows what water is. Which, I admit, probably went a bit too far as I got some stares. <laughs> and sister-in-law demanded to know if I was calling her a bad mother. I said the evidence speaks for itself. Look in a mirror. And if she wanted to be able to afford to move out of my parents' house someday, then she needs to put her college degree to some use. Get a job. Learn to save up money. Do something. My mother already does most of the child care for my brother's kids anyways. So she'd have plenty of time after her baby gets a little older. My brother's oldest kid, who's seven years old, ran up to start kicking and screaming at me for yelling at his mom. And he kept at me about how his mother said that I was the bad guy who made her cry and didn't let them live here. That's when my brother goes and grabs his son away. But all the other relatives jumped back in and this sort of turned into a family intervention against sister-in-law and brother. She was crying, her new baby was crying, her kids were crying, heck. Even Dan was nearly in tears with the verbal lashing he was being assaulted with. He ended up just sitting on the ottoman I kept on my shoes by the front door and looking like a complete wreck. He couldn't look anyone in the eyes. He couldn't even say two words to me. Not with the whole house filled with angry people ready to judge him if he tried to let out his inner golden child again. If they weren't there to get in his way, I bet this would have ended up a repeat of what he tried to do to order me around and try to take my house months earlier. By this point, though, he's been so thoroughly humiliated that his and my parents' reputation and the family was completely destroyed because the masks were all off now. Soon after my parents, brothers, and sister-in-law had all left in defeat, the party resumed and we were all avoiding speaking of what just transpired for the rest of the evening. Since most of the adults have been drinking, everyone stayed the night in my house. I even let some of them sleep in the camper so there'd be enough space. I admit, ah, uh, it also makes a good guest house. My relatives all wanted a tour of it earlier as well, and they said they couldn't believe I've been living in it for two years. I got a lot of questions about it, like what summer, what winter was like, and so on and so forth. I was up earlier than everyone else Christmas morning and had a fresh pot of coffee and some ibuprofen for those spiked eggnog hangover cures a few of them had. I was complimented on being a way nicer host than my parents ever were, and we all agreed to do it again next Christmas. After Christmas, sister-in-law finally stopped making posts that were obviously digs at me, and deleted all the old ones as well. But shortly after the new year, she more recently made a new post complaining about how she tried to convince my parents to get a camper like I did so it could be set up in the backyard so Dan and his family could use the whole house as their family home. Well, I guess you would say that's a taste of one's own medicine. It's never fun. <laughs> because my parents turned that idea down quick. Vehemently, I hear. No one's going to push them out of their own home was their statement, let alone their master bedroom they're so proud of. The post was only up for a couple of days before sister-in-law swiftly removed it, and she has hardly posted anything since then. She loves to complain, but if a tree falls and no one's around to hear it, can it still complain? Sister-in-law, I guess, has realized there's no point in doing it when no one else hears her anymore. And Dan can't afford the move of his family on his own salary alone anytime soon. If they end up expecting another child in the next few years, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. 
Things mellowed down for me since then, and I've even invited friends over for a poker night. I suck at poker because I can never remember a darn thing about it. But so what? We get to drink beer, eat junk food, while being merry idiots. And don't forget about when we loaded up on Whoppers from Burger King and just had it the best way four men can when they just want to have a good, undultured time and get drunk. I think maybe around summer, I'll look into possibly dating somebody. I'm not exactly getting any younger here. Fingers crossed that goes well. My camper just sits idle in my backyard now, and I admit there were some days I went out there just to spend time in it. I did live in this thing for two years, you know. It's like my second home. And maybe one day, I'll actually get to use it for camping, like it was meant to be. I've never been camping. My parents consider it a waste of time, so it'd be a completely new experience for me. This pretty much marks the end of what's happened. My parents, brother, and sister-in-law have all been staying very clear away from me. In fact, they seem to have gone back to acting like I don't even exist. Like they did before I bought a home. I mean, it's not like it bothers me at all. It's better that way. But they'll inevitably come right back in some way. I know they will. They always do. At this point, I just have one thing. I just wonder what kind of stupid thing they'll do next. But to be honest with you, if anything notable like this ever happens again, I'll make another post if this account's still active. This might be one of the craziest stories we've seen in quite some time. I simply could not believe the nerve, the audacity, and just the straight-up entitlement of the people. They were not giving no an answer. Even when police got involved, it didn't seem to matter. Here's one of the top comments. The chef's kiss for the family intervention scene, with the icing on the cake being the kid who defends his mom's honor. Well, written. Now, if someone would start knocking someone out every time they see each other, it would be perfect. Guys, I want to know your exact thoughts about this story. I know it was a wild ride. Go ahead and drop your thoughts down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing if you want more stories like this. Have an amazing day, and I will catch you guys in the next one.